Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for October 16th, 2013. Uh, I'm Matt Gravel from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com and on Twitter at uppercutwood. If you are watching the video but you want to participate in the chat, head over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom and log in with your Twitter ID. You can participate in the chat and watch the video right there. We do this every Wednesday at 7 uh, Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So thank you for joining us, and uh, remember, if you're not in the chat room, you can just follow along on Twitter with hashtag WoodChat. With me tonight is Chris Wong. What does it say under there? Just a woodworker jumping? Hurdles. Did it, did oh, it cut hurdles. hurdles? Hurdles, yeah. Word raft hurdles. Just a woodworker jumping hurdles. Yeah, it's been one of those days. Um, Chris Wong here from Flair Woodworks and Time Warp Toolworks. Um, you can... Follow my blog at flywoodworks.com slash blog or my blog on timewarptoolworks.com as well. Um, yeah, it's been, been one of those days, Matt. Um, everything, all these unexpected problems cropping up. Um, the big one that I'm just still reacting to is um, we had a, a nice display we'd made that I made for Woodworking in America that was supposed to arrive today at uh, Scott's and he was going to bring it and set it up at the show and as part of his booth and uh, it didn't make it. So um, we've got $800 worth of planes floating out in the mail system somewhere and some other promotional signage and uh, I don't know. Not get, um, we're still going to do our promotional offer um, but uh, I really wanted to have our, our, sh our stuff there. I think it would be a great opportunity for us. Um, yeah, our, our show special, $800 for a set of five planes and four bench dogs. Um, we're still going to go with that, but uh, it would have been really nice to have the planes right there at the show for people to handle. That stinks. What's the show special again? Uh, $800 for a set of five planes. That's a pair of hollows and rounds, number sixes and number eights, and a rabbit plane, and four dogs, four bench dogs. Um, Okay. Shannon Rogers said that he would bring his planes, so I don't think he's going to let them out of his hands, though. But uh, right. he's not something there. Yeah, he's, he's not going to be selling them. Well, yeah. um, that that's that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, I'm I'm a bit I'm I'm a lot frustrated by this, but uh, th uh, nothing we can do about it. Um, Who was the crappy shipping company? It was uh, the Postal Service, Canada Post, U USPS. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is a big can of worms, but who would you recommend? I don't know, FedEx or UPS or DHL. Okay. Somebody not that not postal service. Okay. So, but it doesn't matter now who I'd re recommend. No, no. Well, for next time. Um, it it, it would be, definitely be more expensive. Mm, yeah, yeah, but um, we're after a sure thing here in. Yeah, the cost would have been. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason it shouldn't. There's no reason that it shouldn't have not arrived. It should have. How about it should have got there? Yes. <laughs> it it definitely should have arrived two days ago, and I gave them extra time to anticipate any problems like this. But apparently, it wasn't enough. So, um, I don't know. It sucks, but. Uh, I'll Maybe. deal with it. Yeah. Let's move on. Talk about something more interesting, Matt. Um, is there an order page on Time Warp Toolworks for this special, or is uh, there not, not people for this? You not, um, if you want the special, um, you can just contact me directly, um, Chris at TimeWarpToolworks.com. dot com. Um, it's it's just for the one set of planes that we built for the show. Um, we had a nice little package set up there. Um, oh, it was a one offer. It's not like you were. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it, it was. It was oh. a take home or or this one set we have here, our demo, our demo set. That's what it was. Gotcha. I thought it was yeah. sell that deal to anybody that had the code. So. Yeah. Um. We're still working out the details of that. We're, like we just found this out a couple hours ago. So, um, you can watch for details on the Time Warp Toolworks uh, dot com site. And um, if you're looking for some molding planes, this is probably your best opportunity to get a good deal on these planes. Hmm. And we know they're good. 
Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I posted a uh, demo that I did with the molding planes last week. Um, that's also on the Time Warp blog. Um, I don't use them often, but every time I do, I find them easy to pick up, easy to use, and I get, I get good results, too, with my limited experience. That's yeah. enough, about, enough about Time Warp there, I think. But let's talk about something more interesting. So, um, so Woodworking America is coming up, eh? It is, and that's why Mr. Scott Meek is not going to make it with us tonight because yeah. um, he's an old, a very, very old person, and yeah. he needs to go to bed um, early. Yeah. So he uh, he went to bed early so he can drive to Woodworking in America in the morning, and so the and maybe maybe there'll be a box on his doorstep when he wakes up. Who knows? I sure hope so, but um, he says he's leaving at 4 a.m. and I don't know. I'm I'm kind of hoping that USPS delivers it like at min midnight. Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to be doing that. <laughs> that is that is definitely not their style. Definitely not their style. Um. So yeah, Woodworking America is happening, and I'm not going. Yep. The two um, losers been, here aren't going. <laughs> I've been going. Um. I've gone three times, two or three times. I can't remember how many times I've been. Shoot, that's really weird. Maybe I've only been twice? Um, wow, why can't I remember? That's really lame. Anyway, um, but this I've year I just couldn't swing it, and, um, and I'm flying to the Ukraine Friday, so uh -huh. it's really not going to work out. Um, I wish I was going. But my rule this year was if I go, the business has to pay for it. But my mm -hmm. other job was so busy that um, didn't happen. I enough, I didn't, didn't work. that to, to yeah. So yeah, I did. I did a lot of small jobs, not not any big profitable jobs. So, mm -hmm. but they were fun. Yeah, yeah. Not that's good. Person, so, yeah, I went uh, the last two years, and it is a total blast. Um, Definitely one of the highlights of the year, especially if you're big into woodworking like I know everybody here is. Um, yeah. So I was kind of disappointed not to go this year. Um, hopefully next year I get to go. So. It's not very often that you can walk up to Chris Shores at the end of a of an hour talk and grab a plane from him at his workbench and start working and have a conversation with them. So, or Frank Klaus or Roy or Adam Carabini or any of the other other people. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So, so um, what I thought we would do first is go through the polls that we put up last week and remind people to answer them. Great idea. Um, so let me screen share the results here. Um, I put up two polls last week. Let's see, we'll do this one first. Which one is this one? All right, so this is the tools and techniques poll. So we had been doing some um, Woodworking in America demos for the Hand Tool Olympics, and people seemed to really like the kind of the live demo aspect. And so Ooh. the poll was basically... Okay, well, what other demos would you like? Would you like to see? Um, and we can arrange to have either us do those demos, or somebody else do the demos, or one of the wood chatters do the demos, or whoever. So uh, I'm not sure you can see that, but uh, you probably can't. <laughs> let me. Let why me don't see. you? Why don't you read us some of the highlights there, Matt? Well, the things that are winning are um, sharpening. Mm -hmm. Uh, sharpening edge tools, not sharpening saws. Okay. Uh, preparing stock with hand planes. Hand cut tenons. Uh, making a marking gauge. Uh, hand tool maintenance. Uh, finishing with wipe on varnishes. Mm. And finishing with shellac by hand. And then the next two topics are hand cut mortises and uh, hand cut dovetails. Okay. So if you haven't posted your vote to the poll, go to uppercutwoodworks.com and click on the wood chat menu, and there's a polls option, and there's two two polls in there. 
the other poll is, let's see. Before you get to that one, Matt, yeah. um, I see one person voted for either. What does that mean? Well, what they wrote was maybe have a small segment where a small example of using SketchUp. Oh. And then it says no more spa. So no more I'll have spa. to so I'll have to I'll have to go to Poll Daddy and and figure out maybe I'm not seeing the whole comment in in Maybe WordPress. it says no no more space for details. Maybe yeah. No more space, yeah. Um so that's the other the other that got one okay. one vote. But the idea of Doing some live SketchUp is mm -hmm. a good one, and we recently had uh, a guest, um, Jay Bates. Yes. Who does? Uh, he's pretty good at SketchUp, pretty darn good at SketchUp, and he does his own YouTube tutorial. So, you know, maybe a segment of Jay Bates um, answering questions about SketchUp or showing some cool tips and tricks. Sounds um, like a good idea. So the next poll was, hey, who do you want to see as guests? Uh, you know, we don't we don't have relationships with these people, but we could try and get them on the show. We've been successful getting other people on the show. The people that are winning are Tom Fidgen and Chris Schwarz. Um, and then after that, it's Matthias and Michael Fortune. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, what I tried to do in the polls was put links to these people's websites or videos, and um, Poll Daddy just wasn't letting me do that. So mm -hmm. I would still really want Deset and Wolf on the show. I think they're, I think they're pretty cool. Um, Steve Ramsey has already said he'd, he's totally willing to come back and do the show again. Okay. Um, so that would, be, that would be definitely fun. Mm -hmm. So um, let me show you how to go answer the polls. You go to uppercutwoodworks.com. You click on the wood chat menu. You click on wood chat polls, make your voice heard. And there's the polls. The polls come up. And they're right, they're pretty easy, and there's a section in there for you to write in your other. So Beautiful. please go answer the polls. Thank yes. You. Um, all right, so that's it for the screen share. Okay. So and just a reminder, wood, wood chat is driven by you, not by us. Um, if you give us nothing, we have to obviously improvise. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we want we want your input. We want to know what you want to cover, what you want us to demonstrate, who you want us to get on the show. So please um, let us know with the polls, or you can contact us directly on Twitter or through another method if that's more comfortable for you. Yep. That works. That works. Um, so Chris, why don't you tell us about um, your crazy potato chip Pringle can or Pringle chip uh, cabinet, <laughs> how that's going. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go try and find out what um, no more spa means. Okay, all right. Oh, it literally means no more spa. That just says no more spa. There's okay. No more data over on Pole Daddy. So, so um, I have been building a cabinet that I'm calling Insanity 2. Um, Insanity because it's insane, and two because it's the second. It's actually the third one that I've done, and neither the first two are completed, so my track record isn't very good, but um, I'm trying. Um, this is a draft of a post that I'm writing right now. Um, it will probably be posted on my website later today. I dropped a link into the Twitter chat room um, for those of you over there to have a look at it yourself. Um, so what I did is I bent laminated uh, the top, bottom, and sides of the cabinet. And here's a picture of them here. Um, here's a better picture. And I'm stretched out a bit. Let me change screens here. Hang on a second. Um, when I moved my photos over, it kind of warped the whole thing. So let me just... I'm not even screen sharing, am I? Not right now, you're not. Perfect, because there's nothing good to screen share there. So I did a bent lamination for the top, bottom, and sides in some forms that I made of K3, and pictures are coming in just a second here. Um, 
so I took three plies of one eighth inch Baltic birch and put glue between them and clamped them up for 36, 48 hours until I had warped pieces of plywood. Just mm -hmm. like you buy at the store, but only mine are high grade plywood. Um, where's the best shot here? You can kind of see, you can see the, the curve here, so it's concave at, here at the back and convex at the front. Um, maybe I can just do this. I can show you on my computer. And that's not Baltic plywood, easy. that's British Columbian plywood. Well, yeah. It's British, British Columbian Baltic birch. Is like, is like the Baltic birch, it's just not flat. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So um, there are literally no <laughs> um, flat reference surfaces here. Um, we have a look at this first picture here. Um, you see, even, this, even along the plane, along the edge, it's not straight. Mm -hmm. And what it is, this is the side piece here on the right. I coped it to fit tightly against the underside of the top, so I lost my straight edge there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I did kind of have straight edges along here, but along the sides, but they weren't perpendicular to anything. Um, so I had to do some real creative joinery layout to get it done. Um, you can see my... I did finger joints like this here. I cut them over length so I could trim them up later, and it also allowed me to put clamps on the ends of them. Um, it took me, I think, two days. It could have been three days, but I really don't know. Um, this is just, yeah, this project's just insane. Um, I've, it's been it's consuming me. Um, last night I finally got the cabinet together, the, the two sides, top and bottom. The doors are just clamped in the vise um, in front of the cabinet right now. Um, I'm pretty impressed, pretty happy with how it looks. I need to figure out how to get the back in there, and I need to figure out how to get the shelves in. And, uh, probably would be best if I did both those things before I glued up the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, that might that might matter. Might be wise. Yeah. Uh, I have a suggestion for the back. Okay. Um, dry fit the cabinet. Okay. Uh, lay it down on a on a piece of quarter inch ply. Uh, trace it. Um, okay. And then, and then um, make it, you know, whatever it needs to be, a quarter inch smaller in all dimensions, right? With like a compass, and then just route a okay. uh, route okay. a groove, and so hopefully uh, it'll fit in. Okay. Right. Uh huh. Um. So you, just a, a rabbit? Is that what you? Uh, you could do a rabbit, but I would do it so that the back is actually. You don't need to nail it in. Captured. Like fully captured, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that way, that way yeah, any minor imperfections hmm. um, are hidden. Right. But there are no. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. There that really sounds like are. a pretty good idea. Um, part, yeah. I, I mean, want this cabinet to look good. To look good on the back side as well. So I'm trying to figure out how, if I set it into a groove, it looks just like a back. It looks pretty plain. I want it to be dressed up. So. Okay, then I have another um, crazy idea. Excellent. Okay. Um, similar idea, but instead of using plywood, use another bent lamb glue up. Uh huh. Where the back actually bulges out on the back. So I have considered that. It looks like the cabinet's been overstuffed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, would you set that into a groove as well, or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think if I can rabbit it in and get it flush with the back, I think that'd look pretty good. Yeah, and you could you could. I need to get it airtight though. Maybe not. Why does it need yeah. to be airtight? Uh, I I, w I don't want to see any gaps around the perimeter. I don't think I do. Oh yeah, if you put it in a groove. Yeah. You're not gonna see any. You're not gonna really see yeah. any. Hopefully. And then the other, yeah, I could cut the groove on the router table. That'd be pretty easy. Lay the cabinet down and then run it around the slotting bit. I'd use a handheld. Um, and then just with just a big a big base. Mhm. Mm well, I wouldn't okay. use a rabbiting bit. I'd use a straight bit. 
Uh, and what, what, with the fence? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the surfaces aren't at all flat, right? So I'd have yeah. a really hard time keeping that rabbit planer. Right, I would... Hold on, let me... I think uh, the slotting bit, referencing off the back of the cabinet, is the best way to go. Um, here, let me do this here for you. There she is. Yeah. Yeah, so in the top, and the bottom and the sides, inside, can't you use a straight bit? Can't you lay those, can't you disassemble that? Um, lay those pieces flat. Wait, yeah. is that assembled? Can you take it apart? Yes, it is. It's dry fit. Okay. I would lay the pieces down on a table and use a handheld router with a straight bit with a fence to go along the uh, back edges. Okay. And... Then I, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe that's crazy, but... So this is the problem I have. Um, one step is, of course, not flat this way, and it's also... I don't know, it, it goes from an angle like this, almost square. Yeah. Like this, and then back. Um... It's twisted in every way. I, th I, th I still think you could do it. I wouldn't use a big base on a router, and I wouldn't use a, a big fence. I would use like a almost a almost a a stick on a, a stick with a bearing. Okay. I don't know. I'll try and draw it out for you. Yeah. Um. Um, another option, I could finger joint it in. I could get it. I could cut fingers, five fingers along each side, for example, and then cut notches in the cabinet, and then sit it into that, yeah. and not not try to get an airtight gap. Have a have a little bit of light around the outside. You, yeah, you could do that, and that would be it. Would be cool to continue the finger, the finger joints. Yeah. Or I could I could do a combination. I could rabbit it and uh, do the finger joint as well. You could also do um, through mortises on the sides, back and bottom. Uh, yes. So yeah, they're set in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like do five through five through mortises, and yeah. then have the fingers from the back come all the way through. Okay, and that would have to go in at the same time as the couch assembled. Yep. Okay. Or you could just use. Yeah. You could, you could just use a bungee cord and plastic wrap. Why don't I just do plastic sheeting tape? Yeah, <laughs> blue tarp and masking tape. Blue tarp, that tape. See, because you're in your joint where your side meets your top, mm -hmm. that's much less complicated than your back meeting, mm -hmm. meeting two sides, a bottom and a top. Yeah. Now, the back's the more complicated piece there. Yeah. So I, I cut the finger joints over length, and that was just to help me fit it together. And I've been thinking about how to glue this up, and it would be one bear of the glue up. Um, what I realized is that because they're the, the material is three eighths of an inch, I have about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch um, over length fingers. What I can do is I can pop it apart by three eighths of an inch, have it still together but not together. Yeah. You can get my glue in there and then just tap it home. Yeah. That might, so that, but but if your back has to go in at the same time, that's going to be even tougher. Yeah. Uh, oh, the back could, the that back might could, be a two-person glue up. Yeah. Um, yeah, the back is going to be, I don't know. The back's going to be tough. It's the cabinet the front, different angle for you to look at. I like it. Have you thought so, about the base? What are you going to do with the base? 
Not too much. I've got a I sketched one idea. It's just a, a a massive like a quarter inch steel um, rod bent into curves like this. So they come they, they start underneath and they curve down, kind of like a question mark. And then that's there's maybe twenty four of them around in a circle. That's the pattern. I don't know. Um, you might go with a different material for the base. You might go metal with the base. Yeah, I'm thinking of it. Um, or else I could go with a um, a wood frame. I talked about the quadruple head in joinery I was playing with a while ago. Mm -hmm. That's an option. I think um, oh, I have a really evil idea. Okay. Make a <laughs> well, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> Make a taller, narrower Insanity 4 for the base. <laughs> Is the bottom flat? Is the bottom flat? No. Um, it's kind of flat at the back. It's not at all flat at the front. So... The front has a curve of about five eighths of an inch. And the back has a curve of about one eighth, three sixteenths of an inch. But what about uh, what about front to back and left to right if you were to set the straight edge on on the on the bottom? It's inside the cabinet but on the bottom. Is that flat? Um fairly it, it drops a little bit at the front. Drops a sixteenth at the front there. Um, it drops an eighth at the front and an eighth three quarters of the way back. And here it's symmetrical. Drops a sixteenth at the front. Yeah, I think you got to build insanity four to set that thing on. Yeah. I could set it. Oh. I won't put it on insanity. If this is insanity three, it's, I'm calling insanity two. If I set it on Insanity one and a half, that'd be interesting. Um, insanity one and a half is the the V table. Um, this one that I prototyped. God, this is get over this thing. Hold on a second. I'm asking Twitter what you should do for a base. Would this be awesome for a base, or would this be awesome for a base? What does Adam say? You, you will, will you have conventional shelves, or will, will they parallel to the top and bottom? Um, I haven't given... I've given a little bit of thought to the shelves, and here's my idea so far. Um, another question there. Um... So right now I'm, th I'm thinking um, this wasn't this wasn't planned at all, but I realized that this depth here is a little a little bit deeper than a wine bottle. So I'm thinking of using it as the wine cabinet, making it as a wine cabinet. So oh, that's right, because it's tipsy. It's all bent and drunk. If this does not look square, you should stop drinking. No. Um, so I'm thinking of having a shelf come out, would be curved, kind of, kind of like a J shape, come up and curve over across here, go roughly straight. Probably a slight upwards climb here and then back down. And then this one will be a mirror image that will curve up and over. This one will curve up and over. And I don't know, a fourth one if I can fit it, I don't know. Probably three shelves. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, and then the top will be the biggest, I think. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for those shelves is that even though the carcass is curved and warped and twisted that people have to be able to use the shelves. Yeah, yeah. And that wouldn't detract from the usability at all. Because if people can't use the shelves, then then it's just poorly built, not beautiful. <laughs> I, I keep setting my wine in here and it keeps rolling over onto the floor and breaking. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, if I get four shelves in here, which uh, I know I just said I wanted three shelves in here, but if I get four shelves, it'll give me a point to mount the parallelogram hinges. 
um, mm -hmm. I'll melt one hinge to the first and third for the left door, for example, and I'll melt the hinges for the right door on the second and fourth uh, door. They need to be set parallel to each other, and I guess in the normal world they would be set uh, horizontal. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you want to have a, you want an evil idea? Yes. Make a gigantic spiral that fits in there for wine bottles. No, not that way. That way. So what? You put your wine bottle in, then you turn it. And you don't have to turn it. Let me draw it for you. You don't have to turn it. Um, that could actually be cool. Although I guess if you took something out of the wrong spot, it could be dangerous. Okay, better. Yeah. Better. All right. Better so, right set up. You can see. Like you can see. Can you see that? That's Okay. Yes. So. <laughs> I see. Hold on. Uh -huh. You could set a bottle there. Yeah. You could set bottles. Yeah. This is hard for me. Sorry. Down here. Yeah, I got it. Come on, they could keep going up, and you could uh -huh. set bottles. You could set bottles down here, and if you wanted, they could keep going up this way and up this way and up this way, right? And if you wanted, you could yeah. even set a bottle here. Uh huh. And you could set bottles down here. And you could stand a bottle, and you could stand a bottle vertically here. Cool. <laughs> I like the idea. Um, I think it'd be better as a standalone rack, though. I think it's too much to be. Maybe you know, maybe not. Maybe it is too much to put inside here. I think um, it would just blow people's minds when they open those doors and they go, "What the hell am I supposed to do with this?" <laughs> um, how would you do that bent lamination? You obviously, do you, how do you get into a form or? Well, that's that's a good question. See, um, there's one piece of furniture that I've oh, seen. Right. Yeah. Um, let me back on it. See it here. Okay, let me come back here. There is a plywood box called um, Why Not. It's not a box. It is a um, it's a bench. Mhm. Mm and Adam just got here, and Adam missed the entire show. Oh, my Twitter is not updating at all. By the way. Okay. Um, I see a bunch of comments there in Twitter, and I will address them in a second here, but right now I'm on a thought chain, so bear with me here, please. Um, why not? Why not with a K? Why cannot? And the reason I, the reason I got here with Matt's spiral shelf drawing and my question of how to glue it, how to do that bent lamb, um, I'm asking the same question of this design here. Um, you might have seen it on my blog if you follow. One of my notable inspirations. Have a look here. Mm -hmm. So that curl at the end, I have no idea how to do that. Um, the, the, the first curve is easy, just the same thing I'm doing here. But. Yeah, I don't know how they did that. I would bet that that's multiple pieces, and then the final lamination is put on at the very end. Uh, like Cooper, do you mean, or something? And then vacuum press. Can you vacuum press that? Uh, it might not be vacuum pressed at all. That final thing of lamination. Just uh, ironed on, or well, pressed on, clamped on with a bunch of clamps. Yeah. Or I mean, I don't even know what that if that top. Yeah, I, I would bet that underneath that there's a bunch of partial things put together. 
but I'm get but I'm guessing. Uh huh. Ooh, Joseph Watson says, "Do a floating base where the cabinet doesn't seem attached." Right. Which I like. Um, yeah, I think I'd have to find any way to do the the base, but that's a good idea. I do like that. Um, as I was writing yesterday, um. I was, I was, I'm working on this blog post with an update to Insanity 2, and what I realized is that, um, here's what I wrote. Um, I attribute my excess to my relentless push to try to fail. Um, Insanity 2 is about trying to design something which I cannot create, and so far I've been able to create what I've dreamt up, so my dreams aren't wild enough or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> um, Insanity 2 is just about trying to trying things, trying to come up with ideas and trying to execute ideas that I don't think I can do. Mm -hmm. It just seems so far out there and um, just challenge myself. Yeah. That's why you got to do the spiral shelf. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think I know how you could build it. Okay. You would have to do two do you want to show you a picture again in case anybody missed that? Oh, sure. So Matt wants me to make a bent laminated shelf inside Insanity 2 shaped like a spiral. And wine bottles would stack in the bottom of the spiral and as they as you put more and more they'd fill up around the spiral. Like that. I think it'd be cool, Matt, if you had it on a rotation, so you turn it and then a wine bottle rolls out. The wine bottle rolls out the bottom. <laughs> that might be that might be a little bit dangerous, but um so I think to I think to build it, you'd have to um, make like clamping forms, but they would only control the ends. Ah, uh, okay. And so okay. you have then you'd to kind of twist it. Yeah, you have to, and so you'd. So it'd be like taking a a wire in one end of it, like wrapped around a nail of a drill, and then turning the drill on. Yeah. And having the other end fixed. So you'd basically build you'd basically oh, build a box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only you're doing with it this with a three eighth inch plywood. You, you, see, I'm in, I'm, you might be crazy, but I'm mentally ill. Yeah, I'm starting to see that now. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see if I can do this drawing. Um, Okay, this is a horrible 3D drawing of the inside of a box. Do you get it? Uh, okay. So, no. here I'll show you. This is your clamping form. Okay, here's one side. Okay. Here, here's the back. Here's the other side. And you'd have a front. Okay? And you would... <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> Such a bad idea. And you, you, so you basically have a clamping form and a mated clamping form. Okay. okay. Yeah. But they'd be oh. fastened. They'd be fastened. They'd have a top and a bottom. Yeah, I got it. I got it. You'd yeah. have to get. You'd have to get glue that has a really long open time. Yeah, I, I see. It. Yeah, I got you'd it. Take all your sheets and laminate it. Yeah. And, and you'd wax that sucker and you'd push those in there. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I think probably a better way would be to drop one end of the spiral, one end of the plywood into the inside of your spiral form, and then bend it around in a circle, drop it into the track a little bit as you go. Yeah, but then you have to get the next sheet in, and the next sheet in, and the next sheet in. I do them all at once, but getting that bend in there would be very hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think, it, I think yeah. you can do it. Okay. I'm gonna go back look at the chat room here and see what see what people are saying here. Yeah, I wish my Twitter uh, was creating. Okay, so uh, so Matt, you said that Chris is going crazy for the third time, but he lost count. Yeah. And uh, Mike says, "Are we sure it's only the third time?" And I said something back too, but I can't remember. What did I say? Um. That went my comment. Up. Okay. Um. And then Mike said that he lo uh, loved the cabinet. Adam, I think the bulging back would look good. Um, Matt suggested having a relatively flat 
back that's bulged out like it's overstuffed. Um, I think the bulging back would look good flush with the sides. For example, rebated, rabbited in rather than sitting in a groove as would be more conventional. Um, then we were looking at the base and um, Joseph suggested some kind of floating base with a cabinet that doesn't seem directly attached. So this is like a floating table, floating tabletop design where you've got yeah. kind of reliefs around the legs, and I can I can definitely see that. Um, and do we have any other comments there? That's about it. Yeah, Adam says I'm not sure if wood bends like hot steel does. I still think you could do. I mean, if you were, uh, if, yeah. you were if you were making furniture for if you and I mean, not making furniture, but if you were like a furniture factory, okay, and you needed to do that shelf, you would come up with the two end forms, right? Um, you'd probably put bearings so that the plywood wouldn't squeeze through; it would roll through. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, and then, then listen to this kooky, kooky, kooky idea. You'd put all your sheets together with, you know, a very wet glue, right? But in the, in, the, in the first end of the plywood, you'd have a hole, you'd have a strap that goes through it, and you'd have some way of pulling that, pulling those sheets together through that form on those rollers. Yeah, yeah. What if you had? Yeah, there's a way to do this. You just need to. You just need to spend about a million dollars, and then you can do it. Because hmm. what? Um, if, you know how I said you had two sides? Yes. What if on those? What if in between those two sides, you had bars going across with rollers on them? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what I'm thinking right now is getting. A big steel pin or something that's round like this, yeah. attached to a motor. Putting a slit in the end, three eighths of an inch for your plywood. Yeah. You glue your three sheets of plywood up with that slippery glue and slip it in here. Yeah, and you crank that. This is attached to a motor and it rotates, and then it just creates Pull a spiral. The other end is clamped to your workbench or something really big. This one's attached to the rear wheel of your truck or something. Yeah, and just step on the pedal and then let it roll. It, 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 uh, you got to do it now. You got to do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do just do one for fun, even if it doesn't end up working. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I need someone with some more muscle over here. Yeah, um, I've done some big loops, but that one I think would be that one would take the cake. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Adam, that. Your suggestion of using uh, veneer sheets instead of plywood is probably a very good one. <laughs> um, I'm using eighth-inch Baltic birch. It's it's not bad. Um, is doing laminating the forms I've done so far. It's fine. Uh, um, more severe ones. I don't know how well it will do if it'll fail or not. Yeah. I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gotta do it, man. Big. You want to read Joseph's comment? Big rollers. Yeah. <laughs> I was Joseph it. asks, are you, sh are you sure you just don't need some good meds? <laughs> meds? <laughs> I think that yeah. Oh, I so want to do something crazy like that now where the form is a box full of rollers and you pull it through and you get crazy, crazy shapes where people say, how did he build that clamping form? And the answer is, there. well, it's a super-duper secret. Oh. Yeah. Um, actually, how you could do it, if you rolled it around that axle and you put in wedge spacers in between, so that gave it the spacing. So you'd ramp it up from, I don't know, oh, a yeah, diameter yeah. of four inches and then slip in some shims so you, you maintain that four-inch um, spacing. And then as you keep rolling it, you maintain that spacing and you apply pressure to the whole form. And then you vacuum bag the whole thing and then you go away for a day. Yeah, or steel strap it somehow or something. Yeah. There's a, see? Sorry, I got your head going. Yeah. 
So um, yeah. I would either use veneer for this, or I would use aircraft grade plywood, 16th yeah. inch. Yeah. Um, the catch is that aircraft grade plywood. I think it comes in a three by three sheet, or thirty by thirty inch sheet. It's a hundred dollars. <laughs> for for a one sixteenth of an inch. Yeah. Thirty by thirty one sixteenth. Yeah. What so to get that spiral, I think I need at least five linear feet. Two. I'd probably need probably even ten linear feet. Um, so I'd be looking at. Three hundred dollars per ply. <laughs> what is what is it made out of to make it that expensive? Uh, I, don't know, maybe, I don't know. Highest grade birch, maybe. Hmm. Um, I I don't think it's too dissimilar to Baltic birch, but um, it's thinner. Yeah. Um, you can also buy mahogany bending ply. Um, that's mm -hmm. actually what it's designed to do. I don't like the look of it at all, though, so I'd want to cover it up completely. Um, that's why I went, the, went with the Baltic birch because it, it does look nice. Yeah. Um, especially when you get some funky coloring in it. Yeah. That mahogany stuff is just ugly. Yeah. 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 I think you should. I think you should really look into it, though. I really do. <laughs> so. Uh, next week we have telephone de design game stuff, right? Yes, we were going to do it today, but uh, somebody couldn't make it. So we will have my mother on the show next week, and we're going to get uh, Jeremy on the show as well. So we'll have two new telephone game designs for you. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a peek at the latest one. Let's um, show it here real quick. You've got it there, Matt? I'm going to grab it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you can find all the designs on my on my site flarewoodworks.com. There's a link in the menu bar for the telephone game. You can have a look at all the designs there. All right, there we go. So, okay. so let's show. Remember, there's let's go through. There's Bill. So actually, Eric, and then Bill did a pretty big departure from where we were, which is cool. And then we went to Paul Marcel, um, who scanned in a piece of Veritas graph paper and then drew on it in like a paint program. So it looks like he did, <laughs> looks like he did it by yeah. hand, but no. I think he sketched it, then drew over it. But oh, that's what he did. He sketched yeah. it, then he scanned it, and then he drew over it in paint. Okay. Um, and then Mike's. I wasn't here for Mike's. I kind of like that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, that's more chair height though, right? Definitely. Yeah. And then this is the one we'll talk about next week. And you can see the glasses so, and the keys. We've got some storage in here again. We're back to that. <clears throat> when, do, when did we have storage in this thing last time? It was I'm trying to scroll on your screen. It's not working. Um, it was back uh, maybe I'm Scott's trying. design or just after that. Tim Charles had um, drawers. Oh, did he? Have, he did have drawers. That's right. On the sides, yeah. And I think Vic had two tiers, right? He had a lower shelf. Yeah, Jay has an upper and lower. Okay. Brian Van Reedy has an upper and lower. Diami has one. That's not really storage, but I guess yeah. it kind of is. Um, Scott had a drawer. Scott had a drawer, yes. And Vic had like the cubby. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, so. But this one has legitimate drawers. Mm -hmm. And looks like two separate drawers, too. Um, we'll get all the details. Yeah, one on either side. Next week. Cool. And then after that, who's up in the game? Uh, Jeremy is up next. So he's going to take over the design today. He's, he's traveling, but not to Woodworking America. He's going to Phoenix or to Arizona for. He said his friend has some kind of party at, party at a celebration in a brewery or something. Mm. So he's he's got some travel time ahead of him. Um, and he'll be doing some designing, I guess, on the plane. Um, after Jeremy is Adam. So um, after Adam, we have Pete and Joseph and Neil. So we've, we're, we're good until 
November 20th. So okay. we're looking for somebody to take over the design and do their version on the 20th of November. And just, I think, four more names we need, and then we're filled up until the next year, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. So Adam's asking, is are we sticking with doing a chair or going back to a desk? Adam, it's up to you. You could turn yes. it into a... You could turn it into a cat toy if you want. <laughs> it's yeah. It's up to you next week. So yes. not quite yet. So um, Jeremy, we're looking forward to seeing what you do with this and then Adam you can you can tell us what you want it to be. It's been a lot of fun watching it evolve. It um, has really changed. I cannot I would not have guessed that it would have changed this much and come this far. No, I thought it was going to be more of a um, a slower evolution. Mm. Um, yeah. But we really saw some big, and we saw some of that, but we also saw some big steps. <laughs> and we also saw some very minor tweaks, and we got some very, um, some very, I don't know, I don't want to call it a good design because they're all really, they're all really good in their own their own right. Yeah. Just different. Um, but there's definitely, I have my favorites in there. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is we had one specific design that just evolved a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, just getting a little bit better at a time. And then we had some ma major changes where we just moved out yeah. the whole design, which is perfectly yeah. okay as well. Yeah. I really like so it. I, I can see this going into a sculpture. It's got four legs and four feet now with shoes on them. Yeah. I don't how would you how would you make the laces, Chris? <laughs> um sixteenth inch veneer strips, one eighth inch wide and soak them in hot water and then bend them and glue them where they meet. How would you keep them from breaking? Um you could do a couple plies if you wanted to. Um, hot pipe bending might do it. You could bend some. Um, or you could make them out of real shoelaces. Mm -hmm. Or you could do them out of metal. You could, yeah. That, that might be fun. So, All right, what's next? What's next? Yes, sir. I don't know. What do you have coming up? Um, more insanity. Um, Any art walks or shows or? Um, no, no, no shows coming up for me. Um, fall is the woodworking show season, so there is Woodworking America, as I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, that's this weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Um, none of us are, neither of us are making it, but I know some of you guys in the chat room are and. Hope you guys have a great sh have a great time at the show. It's always a lot of fun. Um, Tweet your pictures with hashtag woodchat for us. Yeah, we, we want to see some get some pictures um, of some of the some you know, get some good pictures. Do do the go to the Olympics, participate. Yeah, try to, try something. Go to the or, Olympics. Yeah. And if you really don't want to participate, go heckle. <laughs> that is fun. I. Yeah, I know because I've been heckled. Um, yeah, in the Hantel Olympics actually, but yeah, it can be oh. really fun. I was heckle proof last year. <laughs> you weren't heckled. I had Chuck Bender standing over me, and someone said, "Oh, go ahead and heckle him. I'm not, don't I don't mind me." And Chuck says, "Well, I can't heckle him. I don't know what he's doing." <laughs> 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 That's one of the highlights for me. Um, yeah, check out the Hand to Olympics. That's going to be a lot of fun. It always is. Um, there's a, a local woodworking show in my area at uh, KMS Tools, one of the, the big power tool uh, retailers. So that's this weekend as well. I can might stop by there. This is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday event. They've got demos and other stuff there, sales and that kind of stuff. More power tool oriented than hand tools, but uh, still a good event. Um, yeah. So the most, the person that is gonna that needs the most heckling, that deserves the most heckling, is Tom Iovino. <laughs> I 
I don't yes. know if you saw the dovetails he tried to hand cut a couple years ago, but they yeah. they were like Bucky Beaver teeth. They were, I think he cut the tails at the wrong angle. Yeah. So that instead of holding it mechanically together, it made it easy for it to go apart or something. I don't know. Um, no, I think they're just really gappy. Um, I tried to buy them off him. <laughs> I said that'd be a nice piece of art. Thanks. <laughs> Wouldn't sell them though. No, they were they were priceless. I've got a I mean, picture I mean, of them here, I think. Um. Yeah, there was some good heckling. There was some good heckling. Well, Chris, why don't we why don't we, uh, why don't we wrap it up then? So next week we've got we'll check in on the poll, and we've got uh, two telephone game designs to go through next week. Yes, that's right. We do. And maybe some people who were at Woodworking in America could hop into the hangout and um, tell us how it was. Mm -hmm. Well, you won't oh, be here, right? Hold on, I won't be here next week. But Scott will, and Scott Mika, of course, is at uh, Woodworking America. Make sure yeah. you stop by his booth as well. Uh, try out his planes. Left or right-handed, he's got a jointer plane for you to try. Gotcha. I figured um, out what the time difference was. If I was to join Woodchat, it would be 5 a.m. Ukrainian time. Okay, that's not too unreasonable, Thursday is it? Thursday morning. So m maybe... Yeah. So we'll see. Bring we'll some pierogies. Yeah, I, whatever whatever the morning food there is, I will have. Ah, uh, right, right, yeah. I, I don't will know. have I it in my belly. So I used to eat pierogies for breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Twenty pierogies, bacon, sour cream, and onions for breakfast. <laughs> okay, I like bacon. That that works for me. Yeah. Onion for breakfast, maybe. Yeah. All right, folks, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, I, we saw that Chris is going mentally ill today. And we Matt is, that, too. We saw that I'm joining him. Oh, here comes my little daughter to say goodnight. Come here, you. Goodnight, baby. Good night. Um, so we saw Chris and I are mentally ill today. Scott's not with us because he's uh, an old man going to bed early so we can make it to Woodworking America. Um, what were the things? Oh, we talked about the poll today. Um, yes. And the techniques and the guests that are leading, um, and we talk. Vote, vote, vote. Yeah, go. W please just tell us what's going on because it's really going to help us if we say, "Hey, certain woodworking celebrity type person, um, a lot of people really want you on the show." That would really, really help us out. So, um, and then we got to see some designs, and we got to see Chris's insanity cabinet. And talk about what the base would look like and what the back would be like. So yeah, and shelves too. So if you have any more ideas, um, fire them my way. Um, anything that I think I can't do, I'm open to. That's basically <laughs> it. That's a good way of going about it. So yeah. All right, folks. That is Wood Chat for October sixteenth, twenty thirteen. I'm Matt Gradwall from Uppercut Woodworks. We do this every Wednesday at seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Eastern, over on UppercutWoodworks.com/slash/woodchat/slash/chatroom. Or just follow along on Twitter with the hashtag WoodChat. And even though the show is over, WoodChat is still going on 24-7, 365. If you've got a question or a design or an idea or you need help, just hit us up on Twitter with hashtag WoodChat, and one of the many lovely WoodChat woodworkers would be more than willing to help you out. So good night from Uppercut Woodworks and Chris. Good night from Port Moody, B.C., where the insane are insane and yeah. jumping over hurdles. That's right. That's what they're doing. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody.